Okay, part two. Um, I've got several things painted and I've kind of changed my setup a little bit so that I'm ready to write and decorate more on the surface. I've washed all of my brushes and put them away and just closed my underglazes. And then I put down a piece of newsprint to protect my table from the wax that I'm doing. Um, it doesn't really do any long-term damage, but it does make a mess for other people. And I don't want um, other people in the studio and I don't want wax coming off and getting in the rest of my process. Um, okay, before we get to wax, these black and white pieces, these little shot glasses that I started with, I'm just going to do a quick graffito decoration on this, and I'm using this ballpoint stylus for that. Which side are you? Um, that's just a little drawing tool with a ball on the top of it, and I'm actually using the end where I've chopped off that ball so it doesn't have a, a round writing surface, but a little bit sharper that's going to cut through this um, little layer of black wash a little bit better. Okay, so I'm writing fuck that on these because that's what, that's what my life is now. Uh, swearing a lot. So I have a few of those to do. That's just a really simple kind of decoration that I can write um, on these. that is just graffito, right? Put a thing on the surface and then scratch back through it to show the color of the clay that's underneath. Another thing I like to do on some of these, especially on the bigger pieces, is to use this serrated rib with lots of little teeth that can come in and add a little bit of texture around and mess up some of that brush stroke or contribute to that piece a little bit and the composition in that way. That can be something fun. All of these processes now get to be a little bit dusty. So if you're gonna be working a lot, if you're sensitive to dust, if you just wanna be careful forever, um, you wanna do this over a bucket of water so that all that dust is falling in and getting trapped or wear a mask um, if you don't have to speak while you're doing it. That's that process. Onto these colored pieces that I just painted, I'm going to add a layer of wax so here's an example of what this is going to be. Um, I'm gonna add wax on top of my underglaze painting. This is a finished piece. And then carve lines back through it that I'll fill in with the black wash again. So here on this piece, you can see that I've left the wax a little bit sloppy at the top and the bottom. So I get this kind of overlapping effect. Um, and then where the wax is maybe damaged a little bit by my fingers, I can get some texture from that or where I don't wipe it completely clean off all the way. There's some residue and texture and messiness and layers that can be contributed through that as well. I'm using a stiffer brush for something like this because it can leave those um, um, brush marks, that negative space up here at the top better than a very soft brush or something that's going to be a lot wider. So I'm going to go on kind of rough with this wax and just not complete my brush strokes all the way up to the top or the bottom. Again, this wax is drying pretty quickly because it's going onto bone dry pots, but where my left hand is touching wet wax, I'm going to let it pull that off a little bit so that I'm starting to build up some holes in this protective layer that will uh, let that black stain stick a little bit and just create some depth and mess and noise and unpredictable areas. For me, for this process, for what I'm doing, I like to paint maybe three or four pieces with wax and then go start to do some writing decoration through here because the wax, um, it can dry and get actually a little bit too hard to cut through nicely. It's funny to learn that uh, 
wax gets too hard if it sits for an hour. I don't like how it behaves. It gets a little bit flaky when it comes off instead of just giving a, a smaller, crisper line. And some of the underglazes are actually uh, <coughs> harder than others too. They have a setting compound in there that makes them stable and so that they don't brush off on our fingers. But things like uh, the red and the dark blue seem to be a lot harder to scratch into than others like maybe the yellow or the orange or I think the melon color is one that's a little bit easier to cut into. <clears throat> okay, so once these are dry, once that wax is dry and I can handle it, I'm gonna come and cut into that with this needle tool. Oof, I don't like to write lines with a needle tool. I much prefer something like a dull pencil that's a little bit uh, wider up at the tip and rounder, or the ballpoint stylus, that's the same reason. But for this kind of line quality that can be a little bit chattery and flaky and not smooth around the edges, I actually like the needle tool. It cuts through the wax really easily and it cuts through those hard underglazes really well um, too. So I'm gonna draw some words in here. I decided this cup is gonna say, we got this in the era of Corona. How well can you see this? So I'm getting little flaky kinds of lines around here and I'm gonna just go for it. You can plan more or less depending on your style, how well you wanna sketch this out or have a big plan for it. I like to come in and give these letters a little bit of texture so they're maybe not just outlines but can have some value difference, dark and light and kind of an interesting line quality that's not maybe just an outline. We, okay, got, I like to do this double layer, lowercase g, okay. I think an O like this looks like a starburst clock from the 70s. We got this. Okay, this can be over here. And then if you want to draw anything else down here, maybe this has some stars, something encouraging happening. Sometimes I'll do other little phrases around. It can be clean or messy. I like to brush this off with a stiff brush. Again, this is a very dusty part of the process. That knocks all those bookers away. So when I come back to wipe on my black stain, I'm not gonna worry about any of those extra crumplies sticking back in and getting in to interrupt that channel um, of the words that I've just carved out. So I would carve three or four of those and then come with my same black wash and brush all over this piece to make sure that it's filling in all of those lines. This is another cup that I already decorated. So this is um, a bone dry cup that has an underglaze painting on it that's underneath a layer of wax to protect it. And then I've carved 
through that, these words. We got this. So I'm going to hit this with my black wash. And you can see that it's beating up because it's not sticking where there's that wax. So I'm leaving it here so it can add a little bit of texture and dimension and mess. And then seeing along the top where it's actually sticking where there's not wax and it's soaking in. Go ahead and add black to a couple of these. And I'm watching it as it fills in just to make sure that it's um, filling in all of these lines where I want it to stay. Then, next, simple process. I'm going to just wipe this off. So I'm trying to not wipe too hard up the top or at the bottom so that that wax is, the, the black stain is staying where I want it. Here you can see where my fingerprints have pulled off some of that wax. This one looks like a little screaming face. Great. Very comforting. And uh, here where I've pulled off some of that wax, it's kind of wiping the underglaze off of that spot. So that adds another dimension where that colorful spot is kind of interrupted. And then any of these extra residues that I don't wipe off now will leave some kind of mark or shadow through the firing. So it needs to be really clean if you want it really clean. Not so clean if you're okay with a little bit of mess. Okay, this is a piece that I just spent a few minutes carving on. <laughs> I like to do these word find pieces. So this, I drew a grid and then had created a word find using a website from the Discovery Channel last night. So I transferred that grid of words onto here. I'm covering it all the way in. I think this, I like this. I think it's funny because it really makes you engage with the, with the surface, with the pot, and not in a necessarily an aesthetic way, but in a kind of, I have some time to kill <laughs> game sort of way. Uh, I think that's funny. The topic of this word find is a whole bunch of different breweries. So this is my quarantine time, drinking a lot of beer. What do you do with your spare time? Mug. Okay, everyone, I hope that was helpful in some way. Um, feel free to reach out to the studio or reach out to me if you have any questions. Um, enjoy yourself. Stay safe. Bye.